Well, it's good to know we stand on the solid rock when everything around us changes. The Lord does not change. His word doesn't change. Our salvation doesn't change. And he is our solid rock. Tonight we're going to uh, visit or revisit some, uh, some scriptures that we were in a few months ago. And uh, I feel like that the current condition in our society is just something we need to revisit this chapter again. Uh, just to see, I'm going to reread a couple of articles that I did read uh, months ago. But then I'm going to read a few new articles. I just want us to see this. Here, here's really what I want us to see. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not giddy, with, giddy with excitement about uh, the, the suffering going on in the world with the fear. Uh, but I am... Uh, I guess the word is the word is nervously excited about uh, what's going on because I see things are not falling apart; they are falling in place. It's, it's kind of like when you know something big's about to happen. You know, you just know it, folks. We know God's word is up to date. I want to say it's more than up to date; it's ahead of the times. It's ahead of the times we live in, and it's relevant for this time. It's absolutely relevant. Uh, believers who have read the Bible for centuries, uh, they would take all of these things by faith as we have to as well. Uh, but we in our generation can see very clearly, we really can, how these events can take place. Uh, you know, years ago, if you as a believer read that uh, you'd see the whole world would see some event or the entire world would be able to be tracked or be traced, you'd just have to believe that by faith. Because you wouldn't have been able to put your hands on the technology or see with your own eyes uh, the technology of why that could be true or how that could be true. But now we see it. We know how those things can happen. So to me, it's just exciting to see uh, that God's word is ahead of the times. It's up to date. And you will be ahead of the times if you just simply believe it. If you just believe what God's word says, uh, you will be ahead of the times. Uh, go to Romans 13, please. Notice verse 1. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. It says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power. And his seat in great authority. Remember that that dragon is Satan himself. The beast is uh, a kingdom, but it's also a king. It's the Antichrist. It's the man of sin. It's someone who leads that kingdom. Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon. They are worshipping Satan, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him. Notice, it's given unto him. The power is given to him. He doesn't take it for himself. God allows him to have this power. It says it was given unto him to make war with the saints. If you're a child of God, you are a saint. Not because you're sinless, but because you have a Savior. And you are one of the saints. All that dwell upon the... Or verse 7, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. All. All kindreds, all tongues, all nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Lord, speak to our hearts tonight. Help us to understand that the things that you pen down or the things, the words that you've settled in heaven, Lord, we can see them coming true in our lifetime. We can see how these things could easily come to pass. So, Lord, I pray that we will uh, with with uh, excitement and faith, anticipate uh, the, the events of the end times and realize, Lord, that we are on the winning side. We do win. We know how this works out. And Father, because we're your children, we are on the winning side. Thank you for that. Now, Lord, speak to our hearts tonight. Teach us some things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Notice it says all that dwell upon the earth, verse 8, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So here we see in this chapter that unholy trinity. We see Satan, we see the Antichrist known as the beast, and then we see this other beast who is the false prophet. All of them are promoting Satan, they're promoting the worship of the beast, they're promoting this one world government, this one world economy, this one world system, and this one world religion. And really what the one world religion is, is worship of the beast. That's what it is. Now notice uh, verse 13, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, this is everyone, to receive a mark in, and God's word gets it right when it says in, right. in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six. I'm not going to read every article I read several months ago, but I do want to read this one tonight. Uh, we know that our world is moving to a cashless society. It's moving to a society where everything can be traced, everything can be monitored. Uh, I, we've seen that in the technology with facial recognition and cell phone tracking. I, I want to read this one article again, though. This is one that I read several months before we ever knew that uh, we would be facing what we are right now in our world with a coronavirus, with a pandemic, and with limited and eroding freedoms. I want you to hear what this says. It says, have you been chipped? That question is set to divide millions of people in the 2020s. This is from 2019. And perhaps billions of people in the 2030s and 40s. Just as the world begins to understand the many benefits of the Internet of Things, but also learns about the dark side from smart everything, including our connected cities, we are now on the cusp of small chips causing major new privacy disagreements. As individuals try to grapple with the privacy and security implications that come uh, with IoT, big data, public and private sector data breaches, social media sharing, GDPR, a new California privacy law, along with data ownership and right to be forgotten provisions, along comes a set of technologies that will become much more personal than your smartphone or cloud storage. Get ready for people to ask you to place microchips under your skin for a wide variety of reasons. Why are implanted chips so controversial? And by the way, you say, who, who, is this some conspiracy theorist? You know, that, that's, I, I've just learned when people throw that tag on things, they, they usually are trying to hide something. Right. And uh, if you look at the website, it's govtech.com is, is where this comes from. Very interesting. Uh, get ready for people to ask you. To place microchips under your skin for a wide variety of reasons. Why are implanted chips so controversial? What is at stake? How can such a small thing affect so many people? What leads me to proclaim that implanted chips will become the next big privacy debate? Short answer, implanting chips in humans has privacy and security implications that go well beyond cameras in public places, facial recognition, tracking of our locations, our driving habits, our spending histories, and even beyond ownership of your data. This topic touches upon your hand, your heart, your brain, and the rest of your body, literally. This new development is set to give a very different meaning to hacking the body. 
While cyber experts continue to worry about protecting critical infrastructure and mitigating security risks that could harm the economy or cause a loss of life, implanted chips also affect health, but add in new dimensions that conflict with people's religious beliefs. The Atlantic offered an article in September 2018 describing why you're probably getting a microchip implant someday. Well, I'm not. <laughs> The article focused on how microchip implants are going from tech geek novelty to genuine health tool. Now, isn't that interesting? You know, I, I remember what, when I've heard all these things in the news about uh, the coronavirus and the pandemic and how people are just giving up freedoms without even batting an eye. This verse came to mind very quickly that, uh, from Job. Remember what Satan himself said? He said, all that a man hath, will he give for his life? Oh, take my freedom as long as I'm, I have peace and safety. Take my freedom as long as you can guarantee my health. Folks, nobody can guarantee your health, first of all. Nobody. Uh, we can sanitize and Lowe's can sanitize and McDonald's can sanitize. And, but the bottom line is, yes, I, I think you should take precautions. And we are. We are taking precautions. But the bottom line is our lives are in the Lord's hands. That's the bottom line. Yeah. But if you can just convince people to receive this because it's for your health. And by the way, you are not a good neighbor. You are a bad citizen. You are hurting other people's health if you don't take this. This is how you get a nation to turn against freedom. This is how you get a nation to uh, no longer think, but allow others to think for that nation. This is how you get people just to wholesale give up their freedom. Uh, the article focused on how microchip implants are going, and I read this months ago. I read this before this whole pandemic we're going through. You say, is there an agenda? There's absolutely an agenda. Right, right. Say, who's behind it? Well, I know who's behind it. Satan is. Because he, he thinks he can rule the world. Well, he'll get a shot at it. And he'll fail miserably. It focused on how the microchip implants are going from tech geek novelty to genuine health tool. And you might be running out of good reasons to say no. This is months ago I read this. The company estimates that it'll be selling chips capable of tracking a wearer's live vital signs. Oh, but they won't, they won't track your location. You believe that? Our government would never spy on us. You believe that? They are. That's conspiracy theory. No, it's not. It, it's a proven fact. I mean, it's a proven fact. There, there's, a, there's a group of people that's twice as big as the city of Mount Washington who work every day tracking us. That many people. About 40,000. 40,000 people. Um, the company estimates it will be selling chips capable of tracking a wearer's live vital signs in a little more than a year. But a few other developments will come first. McMullen hopes that people will soon consider storing their medical information on encrypted RFID chips. And the group is also working on a way to make GPS-enabled chips. Why do you need that to track? Available as an option for families to track relatives suffering from severe dementia. Folks, do you think Satan is going to come and say, hey, I want to take over the world, so you're going to get this thing stuck in your hand and in your forehead? Is that how he's going to approach? No. It's the same way he approaches when he tries to take your Bible out of your hand. He says, hey, you know, let's take that word out of there. Let's take that verse. It really doesn't belong. I mean, after all, I want what's best for you, so let's take that away. You know, Satan has found, by the way, Satan has found long ago, he can't destroy churches from the outside in, so what does he do? He'll come from the inside out. He'll try to corrupt doctrine. He'll try to take away the Bible. He'll try to get a church to compromise. Amen. Right. Another use for the chips that uh, uh, the group is also working in a way to make GPS enabled chips available as an option for families to track relatives suffering from severe dementia. Another use for the chips that poses both obvious benefits and legitimate concerns. Second, the topic resurfaced last month with several stories like this NPR article on how thousands of Swedes are inserting microchips under their skin. I mean, that's already happening. Uh, I just heard uh, they had a chip party on, on one of the, the shows this past week. Uh, how about this? Can a brain implant treat 
Alzheimer's. It might just be placebo uh, implanting things into your brain, but medical necessities aside, well, that can become the focal point. All that a man hath will he give for his life. Oh, you're telling me I'll be safe if I just get this thing put here? Fine, do it. Take my liberty, take my freedom. Medical necessities aside, would you pay to receive a chip implant if it offered some other optional medical enhancement for your body? Other research which started as deep brain stimulation as a treatment for Parkinson's disease now suggests that chip implants can boost your memory. Or what if a chip implant uh, offered the convenience of embedding a smartphone in your body? This Allure.com article suggests how. Chris Harrison, a professor of computer science at Carnegie Mellon University's Human Computer Interaction Institute, has been working on similar ideas since 2009. People want to do more sophisticated things on mobile phones, and the industrial answer seemed to be, let's put bigger and bigger screens on them, he says. That only works up to a point. Why don't we just forget the screen entirely? Why not use the skin? Instead of the three and a half inch iPhone, why not have the 20 inch arm bone? So Harrison created OmniTouch, also in collaboration with Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, yeah. Bill Gates, yeah. Yeah. a device worn on the shoulder that would protect, that would project your phone interface onto your palm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brother John is calling. Hello. <laughs> a depth sensitive camera picked up when and where you tapped on your skin, so the projection reacted with it. The invention of smartphones enabled the creation of all these ideas and apps and services. Imagine what that will be like for the body, Harrison says. All that a man hath will he give for his life. Here are a few basic questions to consider about microchip implants. What are the benefits of implanting the chips? Is implanting chips physically and emotionally safe? Who owns the data on the chip? Who has access to the data and when? Listen, we promise, we promise we'll never do anything with your data. We promise you'll be safe. We promise you peace. You believe that? You know, it, it's kind of like the story of the man. He was, he was climbing up a mountain and there was a poisonous snake at the side of the road. And the poisonous snake talked to the man. He said, hey, would you give me a ride up the mountain? I, I, it's a long way. I don't want to climb all the way to the top. He said, I'm not going to pick you up. You're a poisonous snake. You'll bite me and I'll die. He said, I won't bite you. And you won't die. He carried the snake all the way to the top of the mountain. The snake bit him. And as he was dying, he said, I thought you said you wouldn't bite me. And I wouldn't die. He said, you knew what I was when you picked me up. Folks, do you really trust this world system? Do you really trust anything other than the, the word of God, the truth of the word of God? Do you really trust that they have your best interest at heart? Who owns the data on the chip? Who has access to the data and when? Do the chips communicate somehow with outside networks? How are chips updated when flaws are found? Can the chip be hacked? Assuming yes, what security is in place to stop unauthorized access to data and manipulation of data? Do religious beliefs forbid the practice? Is implanting the microchip truly voluntary? Will it still be voluntary tomorrow or in 10 or 20 years? Is the practice medically necessary? Are incentives offered to those who participate? Are penalties coming for those who don't? Oh, this is from GovTech.com, by the way. Will being chipped start as an exception and become the rule? Will ethical and moral processes and procedures be breached by hackers? No way to stop the bad actors once you begin. What laws are put in place on this implanted chip topic? What company policies are affected on a wider scale since the internet is an accelerator for good and evil at the same time? What good or evil outcomes will come from this implanted chip trend? Military leaders point out that capabilities take a long time to develop, but intentions can change overnight. In other words, the debate will not only center on current technology solutions, but also on what you believe might happen in the future regarding the use of implanted chips. For example, will it truly stay voluntary? Well, one day it won't. Finally, since perspectives on this topic do not cut across the typical left-right divide, your personal de decision on receiving a chip implant may have more to do with your trust in your doctor, your employer, your government, the technology company providing the answers, or even your religious belief and your political party affiliation, or what a specific chip can currently do or not do. Well, I'd never give them access to all my records. I'd never give them access to my location all the time. 
Many have already done that with their cell phones. Um, but all that a man hath will he give for his life. Well, if it's for my health, I would do it for my health. Hey, I want to be a good neighbor. You know, uh, it, it's almost like uh, the way Mussolini worked in Italy with the fascists, trying to put public and social pressure on people to do what they want done, almost to the point of threatening them. Soft violence almost. Uh, this from March 19th of this year. Bill Gates will use microchip implants to fight coronavirus. Yay, the hero. A hero. Say, is he the Antichrist? I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to waste time believing it, who is or isn't. I, again, that's fun for speculation, but we don't know who it is. We will know. We will know based on what Jesus said. But, but the fact is, what I, what I just simply want us to see is that things are in place. Right now, things are in place, and all it's going to take is for the world to just willingly say, please, please, it's not going to be, you're going to take this, oh no, no, please, no, and they put it in your hand. You're going to take this, no, 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 they stick it in your head. No, it's going to be, please, give me my chip. It's for my health, I want to be a good neighbor. It's for, it's for all my neighbors, I want to be a good one. Bill Gates will use microchip implants to fight coronavirus. Conspiracy theory. Go, go do your own reading. Go do your own research. Figure this out, folks. If all you do is believe everything you hear coming from a news anchor's mouth, if that's all you do, you, you need to wake up. You need to start realizing some things and, and, and get your brain in gear and ask God to give you some wisdom. Bill Gates will use microchip implants to fight coronavirus. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates will launch human implantable capsules that have digital certificates. Now, you can also go read and say, no, none of that's true. What you find is he's not going to come out and say, everybody's getting this or else. They're smarter than that. But what you're going to find is this is definitely the intention. It's absolutely the intention. Microsoft... Co-founder Bill Gates will launch human implantable capsules that have digital certificates which can show who has been tested for the coronavirus and who has been vaccinated against it. The 64-year-old tech mogul and currently the second richest person in the world, uh, second to Amazon's, I believe now, Jeff Bezos, revealed this yesterday during a Reddit Ask Me Anything session while answering questions on the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. By the way, March 19th, that's the day we were told we couldn't have church assemblies. Same day. Gates was responding to a question on how businesses will be able to operate while maintaining social distancing and said that eventually we will have some digital certificates to show who has recovered or been tested recently or when we have a vaccine, who has received it. The digital certificates Gates was referring to are human implantable quantum dot tattoos. Say, so is this a sci-fi book? No, this is what's happening right now. Quantum dot tattoos that researchers at MIT and Rice University are working on as a way to hold vaccination records. It was last year in December when scientists from the two universities revealed that they were working on these quantum dot tattoos after Bill Gates approached them about solving the problem of identifying those who have not been vaccinated. The quantum dot tattoos involve applying dissolvable sugar-based microneedles that contain a vaccine and fluorescent copper-based quantum dots embedded inside biocompatible micron-scale capsules. After the microneedles dissolve under the skin, they leave the encapsulated quantum dots whose pattern can be read to identify the vaccine that was administered. The quantum dot tattoos will likely be supplemented with Bill Gates' other undertaking called ID2020. It's very interesting. Go look that up. Yeah. ID2020. In fact, let me read a little bit about that. Uh, but you can look it up later yourself. ID2020. It says we need to get digital ID right. Since 2016, ID2020 has advocated for ethical, privacy-protecting approaches to digital ID. 
For the one in seven people globally who lacks a means to prove their identity, digital ID offers access to vital social services and enables them to exercise their rights as citizens and voters and participate in the modern economy. Well, that sounds familiar. That no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Hmm. The Bible got it right again. But doing digital ID right means protecting civil liberties and putting control over personal data back where it belongs in the hands of the individual. Oh, it's for your liberty. It's for your peace. It's for your safety. Every day we rely on a variety of forms of ID to go about our lives. Our driver's license, passport, work badge. Building access cards, debit and credit cards, transit passes, and more. But technology is evolving at a blinding pace. This is all from ID2020's website. Uh, and many of the transactions that require ID are today being conducted digitally, from e-passports to digital wallets, online banking to social media accounts. These new forms of digital ID allow us to travel, conduct business, access financial and health records, stay connected, and much more. While the move to digital ID has had many positive effects, it has been accompanied by countless challenges and setbacks, including large-scale data breaches. Your data's safe! Really? Affecting millions of people. Most of the current to tools are archaic, insecure, lack appropriate privacy protections, and commoditize our data, but there's a, that's about to change. And ID 2020 is leading the charge. We are businesses, nonprofits, governments, and individuals working in collaboration to ensure that the future of digital identity is indeed good ID. Very interesting. So Bill Gates is working on this quantum dot tattoo that gets inserted under the skin uh, that can be traced, that can be tracked. They're working on this ID 2020, which is an ambitious project by Microsoft to solve the problem of over 1 billion people who live without an officially recognized identity. ID 2020 is solving this through digital identity. Currently, the most feasible way of implementing digital identity is either through smartphones or RFID microchip implants. The latter, the RFID microchip implants, will be Gates' likely approach, not only because of feasibility and sustainability, but also because for over six years, the Gates Foundation has been funding another project that incorporates human implantable microchip implants. This project, also spearheaded by MIT, is a birth control microchip implant uh, that will allow women to control contraceptive hormones in their bodies. I have an article about that, Microchips Biotech. Microchips, innovative drug delivery technology is designed to store and precisely deliver hundreds of therapeutic doses over months or years in a single implant. All that a man hath will he give for his wife. Put it right there. Give it to me. Give it to me. I want to be a good neighbor. The implant is intended to be operated by the patient to deliver medication on demand or on a predetermined schedule that can be activated or deactivated wirelessly as required. With the support of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in the form of approximately $17.9 million in grant funding to date and the potential for up to an additional $2.5 million in grant funding in 2020, Microchips has been developing an implantable, long-acting, reversible contraceptive application of the technology. These are all things happening now. As for ID2020, to see it through, Microsoft has formed an alliance with four other companies, namely Accenture, I IDEO, Gavi, and the Rockefeller Foundation. The Rockefellers. The project is supported by the United Nations and has been incorporated into the UN Sustainable Development Goals. That one world movement, that one world economy, eventually that one world religion, worshiping the beast. It will be interesting to see how Bill Gates and ID2020 will execute all this strange terminology uh, because many Christians and surprisingly a growing number of Shia Muslims are very opposed to the idea of microchipping and any form of body invasive ID technology. You understand they're going to make you out to be a rube? They're going to make you out to be a fool? Right. How, how can how how can 
Satan put his, his plan into place. He has to remove the truth. He has to remove those who are, are standing against what he is trying to institute. Some Christian legislators and politicians in the United States have even tried to ban all forms of human microchipping. But on the other hand, this is Bill Gates' perfect opportunity to see the projects through because as the coronavirus continues to spread and more people continue to die from the pandemic, less than the flu so far this year, but people have died. I'm not making light of it, but I'm just saying there's more to it than what you're hearing. The public at large is becoming more open. There's the key. Give it to me. Put it right there. More open, and that's how it's going to be. To problem-solving technologies. I like problem-solving, don't you? I like health. I think we should do things that are wise and smart and healthy. That will contain the spread of virus. The main reason many Christians and some Shia Muslims are opposed to body invasive ID technologies, however helpful, however helpful such technologies are for preventing pandemics, is because they believe that such technologies are the so-called mark of Satan mentioned in the Bible. Well, you got that wrong. It's the mark of the beast. But it is instituted by Satan. In the book of Revelation in the Bible, anyone who does not have this mark is not allowed to buy or sell anything. Isn't that interesting? Last year in November, a Denmark-based tech company, which had contracts to produce microchip implants for the Danish government and the U.S. Navy, had to cancel the loss, launch of its supposedly revolutionary Internet of Things-powered microchip implant after Christian activists attacked its offices in Copenhagen. You remember when Nero blamed the Christians for burning down Rome? Folks, all I'm saying, I, 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 believe me, and we'll get here in just a minute, I'm not being gloom and doom. I'm really not. I'm actually, as I said, almost nervously excited. Why? Because I know God's doing something. I know he's still in control. Things aren't falling apart. They are falling in place. And we can see it with our eyes. And here is somebody uh, commenting, the uh, news editor, right after this article. People are commenting, saying, I'm not taking that. I'm not going to put that in my hand. Uh, he says, to everyone freaking out in the comments, please, this has nothing to do with your conspiracy theories. This is clearly one solution to pandemics. A solution with many other applications that could improve the lives of billions and pull them out of the misery and suffering that your conspiracy theories and superstitions have never been able to solve. It is mind-boggling how in the 21st century all of you who have access to technology and clearly know how to use it are recklessly coming to your crazed, superstitious conclusions about simple technologies. Calm down. Bill Gates is a visionary. And his much-needed humanitarian work has nothing to do with your superstitions. We are in the middle of a global pandemic. It is not the time to be caught up in selfish prejudices and superstitions, but rather a time to think how one's actions could literally save the lives of others. Uh, our own governor said, you're going to church, you're spreading the virus like wildfire. Yeah. Folks, we have more social distancing. We're washing our hands and sanitizing stuff and using common sense approach more than some stores, many stores I've been in. Yeah. More than, by the way, I drove by the liquor stores again on Friday. No, I didn't go in. I drove by, I took a picture of a couple of them. They're in this little square footage building. They have 12 cars packed in their parking lot and all those people have to be inside. I took a picture of the sign that says, cut rate liquors, right up the road here. It says, Andy said, our governor, you can't be doing that, but we're essential. Folks, what I'm telling you is just use some common sense. There's an agenda. Should we use common sense and cleanse things? We do. We do. Brother Buster's, I say we, Brother Buster's in here for hours. Cleaning things, getting things ready for services. What I'm saying is there is an agenda. There is a globalist agenda. See, that's conspiracy theory. No, it isn't. Wake up. Read. Realize. Read the Bible. Realize this is where things are headed to. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. It's not the time to be caught up in selfish prejudices and superstitions, but rather time to think how one's actions could literally save the lives of others. Hysteria, panic, and I thought I'd never be listing this. Superstition are the worst possible states of mind one could devolve into. 
it is time that perhaps everyone was a bit more like Bill Gates. I'm trying to think of others. <laughs> Be a good neighbor. Well, that's what the Bible says is going to happen. It says that he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Say, is this exactly how it's going down? I can't tell you exactly, but I can just tell you God's word is true. These things, are, these things are upon us. The technology is here. Here is wisdom. Let him have to understand and count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. Well, Satan has his day, the beast has his day, the false prophet has his day, but they will be cast forever into the lake of fire. They are losers. They do lose at the end. Look at Revelation 14, verse 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying, With a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Because notice that mark is always tied to worship of the beast. Right. It says, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Look at chapter 15, verse 1. It says, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels, having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall be come and worship before thee for thy judgments are made manifest. Look at Revelation 16 verse 1 and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Look at Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. The Bible says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed, is holy, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Hallelujah. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Don't be troubled, child of God. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus told us in Matthew 24 things that would happen. He said, see that ye be not troubled. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? Boy, it sounds bad, preacher. It does sound bad, but actually it, it isn't all that bad, child of God. Not for us. Not for us. Oh, trouble here is temporary. Temporary. What shall we then say to these things? Well, here's what I'm going to say. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather than is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors, Amen. through him that loved us.
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. Go back to Revelation 12 and look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. How did we overcome? Through him that loved us. Revelation 12, verse 9, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. We have overcome through the blood of Jesus Christ. And there are promises, and I want to end with these. Go to Revelation 2. There are promises to those that overcome. Oh, we have overcome through the blood of Christ. Amen. The Son of God paying the price for us. Look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. I'm not going to be touched. By the second death, I won't be hurt. Back in verse 7, to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. Look at verse 17. And to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden man, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saying, he that receiveth it. Go to verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and will rule with Jesus Christ, by the way. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him the morning star. Look at chapter 3, verse 5. He that overcometh. The same shall be clothed in white raiment. What's that white raiment? The righteousness of the saints, which we got from the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Look at verse 12. I am getting a mark on my forehead, just so you know. Yeah. So are you, child of God. Verse 12. Him that overcometh. Will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, which is in New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Look down in verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. What do I have written on me? I have the name of my father. Notice, I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. And I will write upon him my new name. Folks, what do we say to all these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Don't let these things trouble you. Let them excite you to realize God's word is more than just up to date. It's ahead of the time. Let's bow our heads together, please. We have overcome through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're listening to this message in this room or online or even later than this is preached. And the truth is you're not sure you're saved. The only way you can overcome is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says we're all sinners and the wages of sin is death. Death and hell are the second death. It is in the lake of fire. That's what we deserve for our sin. But Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son, came to this earth and lived a perfect sinless life. He gave himself on the old rugged cross. He was crucified for us. He took our sins upon himself. He was buried and he rose again. And he will save you if you'll simply believe on him. Trust him alone as your savior. Turn from whatever you're depending on right now. You're depending on your religion. Turn away from that. You're depending on your baptism, your good works. Turn away from that. Depend on Jesus Christ and him alone. Would you call out to him even now? Would you ask him to be your savior? With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, child of God, don't let these things trouble you. Don't let them trouble you. Realize what the Lord said would happen in our world. I'm not saying just hand over our freedoms. I think we should fight spiritually. I think we should be on our knees. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. But one day these things will come to pass. So child of God, don't, don't be afraid. Realize that these things are in place. They're in place. 
And in the right time, we will see Jesus. We will. Rejoice in that. Child of God, don't live in a spirit of fear. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power and of love and of a sound mind. Don't be afraid to speak the truth. Don't be afraid to be a witness. Ask God for boldness, for courage in this time. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your word. Give us the courage, the boldness. Even in this time, Lord, as we heard Josh teach this morning from the book of Acts, believers who faced severe persecution, yet preached your word, yet taught the truth, yet loved and, and got the truth out to a lost and dying world. Help, Lord, I pray that you'll help us not to just go hide in a corner and wait for things to happen. Lord, help us to be out there speaking and giving the gospel and witnessing. Not being ashamed of you and of your word, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for each person here tonight, those who are listening online. Bless us, strengthen us, encourage us. Put a hedge about us, we pray, Lord. Lord, help us, yes, to use common sense measures to protect our families as you've told us to do. But, Lord, ultimately we know our safety comes from you. So we rely upon you for that, Lord. We love you in Jesus.